You know, over the course of NBA history, there have been a lot of fake stars. You have your Michael Carter Williams, who had everybody thinking he was going to be the next great point guard. You have your Pascal Siakams that people were saying was the top 10 player at a point in time and that he was better than Jason Tatum. Remember when that was a conversation? Wild times, I know. But this year, it looks like we've exposed our latest fraud that tricked the entire NBA and his name is Julius Randle. Now, you know, at first I wanted to make a video on my second channel about Julius Randle, but then I was like, you know, what i need to roast him on a bigger platform because he deserves to be called out for the trash he's done this season i mean we're not only talking bad play but we're talking bad leadership and just terrible sportsmanship as a player and if there's one thing you guys need to know about me it's that i criticize people based on their play and i usually leave all of the off the court or personality stuff for when it's necessary but i think today is the day that it's going to be necessary because julius randall's personality as a basketball player is annoying now before we get started with this video if you guys are not subscribed to this channel what are you doing it's taking you far too long press that subscribe button and that bell for post notifications already bruh and don't forget to drop a like on this video because you know your boy mustard makes bangers and it'll be well appreciated to show that support you feel me and last but not least check out hoop concessions for real man we be dropping bangers on my podcast and i would really like for us to get to 3,000 subs asap so if you guys can do those three things for me i would really appreciate it but without Without further ado, let's talk about this fraud, fake trickster Julius Randle. When it comes to Randle, going back to his days with the Lakers, Julius Randle's always been given expectations. Because as one of the top picks in his respective draft class, he was given a lot of expectations to be one of the faces or the primary face of the Los Angeles Lakers. And after suffering an injury in the first game of his rookie season, he had a couple of years in LA that were decent, but it just never came together fully to the way I think a lot of people wanted it to. As a scorer, he really wasn't that efficient nor did he have a jump shot and though he was a pretty good passer when you consider the other playmakers they had on the team they were just better options with the ball in their hands instead of his and considering the fact that the Lakers were going to go on in a new direction of getting free agents primarily the first one being LeBron James there was just no use in having Julius Randle on the roster anymore so in a shocking move that you really don't see from a lot of teams the Lakers let him walk in free agency and sign wherever he pleased and due to how things ended in LA with many people looking at him as a bust he didn't really get that many offers from a lot of teams or at least offers that were suitable for his financial needs so he somewhat decided to take a gamble on himself by signing a short-term deal with the New Orleans Pelicans the Pelicans were coming off of a playoff appearance where they went to the second round and they swept the Blazers who were the third seed on the way so going to a team that had some playoff aspirations where he could back up Anthony Davis and potentially be a six man of the year it seemed like a perfect role for Julius Randle to prove how good of a player he actually was and he did trust me because in New Orleans he had one of his most underrated seasons of his career averaging 21 points a game along with nine rebounds and three assists shooting 52 percent from the field and 73 percent from the free throw line which accumulates to a true shooting percentage of 60 percent now I will admit that when it comes to his actual impact on the team it wasn't as great as his numbers may suggest the Pelicans were not that good of a team especially considering considering Anthony Davis had demanded a trade so once that happened their season was already over and when you look at the flaws in Julius Randle's game it was still there if I'm being real with you he wasn't that great of a defender nor a floor spacer and being at the power forward position that's probably the worst combination to have but nonetheless it was still a turnaround year and a career season at the time for Julius Randle so he decided to opt out of his contract and enter into free agency and lo and behold who is going to come calling the team that thought they were going to get Kevin Durant, Zion Williamson in the draft, and Kyrie Irving, the New York Knicks. Because in what we call a desperation move in response to them not getting the stars that they thought they were going to get in free agency, the Knicks decided to sign Julius Randle to a three-year $63 million contract. Now at the time, was that a little bit of an overpay? Yeah, I will admit it kind of was, but considering the return they were going to get over the next two seasons, I would say it was worth the payment. Because in his first season with the Knicks, 
weeks, it was somewhat disappointing. I mean, reverting back to his old ways of being an inefficient scorer that can't space the floor or play defense, it just didn't look good. And it isn't like the Knicks were competitive. They were one of the worst teams in the league, finishing with a record of 21 and 45 and 12th in the Eastern Conference, being bottom five in defense and bottom five in offense. But then comes the 2021 NBA season for Julius Randle, and that's when everything changed. And I don't think I have to go into too much depth because we all saw it last year. Julius Randle took his game from being a solid starter to an all NBA caliber player. With averages of 24 points a game along with 10 rebounds and 6 assists, shooting 45-46% to 46 from the field and an impressive 41% from 3 on nearly 6 attempts a game, while also shooting 81% at the free throw line, Julius Randle was sensational for the New York Knicks. And don't just look at the numbers, we all saw the tape. Julius Randle was hitting some of the craziest shots that I have ever seen. I mean, we're talking sidestep contested threes that were still going in, post fades in the mid-range that were cash money, he was finishing at the rim with ease, and he was getting to the free throw line consistently and knocking them down at a career high clip of 81%. I mean, I gotta say, this guy was going crazy and in his fucking bag last season. And considering the help around him offensively, it's very impressive that he was able to go out there and do what he did because the Knicks were not a good offensive team. A lot of their offense was just Julius Randle isolation ball and for him to do what he did offensively as a scorer, shooter, and playmaker all in one, it was very impressive. The Knicks would not only go on to finish as the fourth seed in the Eastern Conference, but Julius Randle for his efforts was not only an all-star, but an all-NBA performer. But unfortunately, as far as the positives for that season goes, that's where it ends because in the playoffs, he was exposed for being the fraud that he would soon become. Because in his first round series against the Atlanta Hawks, Julius Randle got a taste of what it feels like to be treated like a star by opposing defenses. Because against the Atlanta Hawks, Julius Randle was thrown with double teams, traps, and a good defensive big in Clint Capella in the paint waiting for him. They also forced him to use his right hand a lot more often, and guess what? He couldn't do a single damn thing good in that series. And I mean not a single damn thing good. Not playmaking, not scoring, not shooting, not defense, nothing. I mean, we're talking averages of 18 points a game, 12 rebounds, 4 assists, looks good so far, but nearly 5 turnovers a game, and shooting below 30% from the field, yes, you heard me, below 30% from the field, and 33% from 3. Just to show how bad that efficiency is, the average efficiency in true shooting is 55%. Julius Randle shot 42% true shooting in that series. And we all know defensively, he isn't giving you that much. He's 6'8 at the power forward position and he sucks on that end. So that means in that series against the Hawks, he was just running, being a negative on both sides of the ball. But hey, it's just one playoff series and hopefully he can bounce back because that's what the Knicks thought. They believed in him after that trash ass series. Because in the offseason, Julius Randle got a four year, $117 million extension. Yes, you heard me correctly, four years, $117 million. To break that down, that is nearly $30 million a year over the next four years after this season. So his contract has not started yet. And by the way, that kind of money is not good starter money. That is all-star, all-NBA caliber money. You don't just throw $30 million at somebody each season just to be an okay starter. You give someone that kind of money because you think they can be a pillar of your franchise, especially if they're coming off of an all-NBA caliber season where they led you to the fourth seed in your first playoff appearance in years. But unfortunately, Julius Randle is already an overpaid player before his contract even kicked in because he's shitting the bed this year. I mean, I have seen some bad performances and declines but this takes the cake as far as sharp declines in the NBA following a great season. As this year, he's averaging 19 points a game, 10 rebounds, and 5 assists. Fair enough numbers right there, right? Even though the points are down, it's decent all-around numbers in the box score. But when it comes to his efficiency, I'm looking at dog shit numbers here. 41% shooting from the field, that's trash. 31% shooting from 3, that's also trash. And 76% shooting at the free throw line, which is nearly 6% less than his last year's 
average. And speaking of last year, his true shooting percentage of 57% last year dropped this season to 50%. So that is a bad offensive season, not just for Julius Randle standards, but this is just not a good year in general. And as I said earlier, his defense is dog shit. And because of that, he's literally making the Knicks worse when he is on the court. And I kid you not, the Knicks are actually a significantly better team with him off the court versus when he's on the court. As for when he's on the court, they have a 108.2 offensive rating. And for when he's off, it spikes up to a 114.2. And on the defensive end, when he's on the court, they have a 111.9 defensive rating. And for when he's off, it drops to a 106.2. So as far as his play, we can already determine that his last season in New York, the 2021 NBA year, yeah, that was a fluke. He got off to a nice little hot start because there was no fans and he got himself into a rhythm. But once the spotlight was on him and teams actually game planned for him as the top guy, he got exposed. And you know what's even crazier to me about Julius Randle? The leadership that he has shown this year has been honestly disgusting. This guy was mad about the fact that he got booed by New York Knicks fans for playing like trash and rightfully so, I'd boo his sorry ass too. But then he proceeded to throw a thumbs down at the Knicks crowd because they were booing him. Look bro, you played like trash and they're going to boo you for it. And sure, you could say that's unfair considering what you've done for them in the past, but you've had a pretty bad year and you're not living up to the standards that you set for yourself last season. And when you went to New York, you know what you're signing up for. This is one of the most harsh fan bases and media outlets in all of sports. It's New York City, the mecca of basketball, Madison Square Garden. If you can't handle the pressure of being in a big market like New York, then that's not the place for you. But his latest action honestly is the worst one of them all. Because in a game where you shot one of nine from the field and made your first shot at the end of the game when it was already over, you can visibly see Evan Fournier trying to dap up Julius Randle. You know, he's obviously trying to console him after a rough game as a teammate, a brother. But instead, Julius Randle decides to brush him off and doesn't even shake any of the hands of the opposing players after the game. Not only are we talking about bad leadership, but that's just bad sportsmanship from Julius Randle right there. And I wouldn't have even mentioned that if that was like his first or second time doing that, but he does that very often. It's not your teammate's fault that you go out there and you shoot one of nine or two of 12 for like five straight games and then you have a random 30 point performance against the Magic. And instead of him taking accountability for his bad performances and obviously him actually just looking like a fluke out there, he instead uses that time pouting and complaining about him not getting foul calls. And it's crazy because this is similar to Carmelo Anthony here. And he's not even as good as Carmelo. But when he has a nice game and they lose, he's out there dapping guys up, pulling them up like Chauncey Billups said about Melo that one interview. But when he has a bad game and sometimes they win, he's visibly upset. And I understand it. You had a bad game, but you won the game, dude. At the end of the day, that's what it's about. You shouldn't be happy in defeat just because you had a good game. That's selfish as fuck and bad leadership. So for when I say Julius Randle tricked us as an NBA community, he didn't just trick us about how good he is, but he tricked us into thinking that he could actually be a franchise centerpiece and a good leader for an organization because he can't. I've seen enough. I've seen how he treats his own fan base. I've seen how he treats his own teammates. And I see that this guy is nothing but a fraud and trickster. But hey, that is just my opinion. I'm sure a lot of you guys may disagree, especially some of you Knicks fans, but I'm sure some of you Knicks fans agree with me. Me. And I know I bashed the Knicks a lot, but I actually feel bad for them because he duped this franchise and their fan base into giving him $117 million, bruh. So you guys, let me know your opinions down below in the comment section. And guys, don't forget to follow me on social media. The links are down below in the description box, as well as the at name on the screen right now. That concludes this video. This is your boy, Young Mustard, signing out. You guys stay safe and have a blessed day. Peace.